Kimraha Huludunya, Falchagu, Yilskat, the Celtic Podcast. On today's show, we'll introduce you to verbal nouns in the present participle in Fekimich Beck and Gaelic, and we'll talk about what is St. Andrew's Day all about in Celtic history segment, and I will tell you about Bible stories for the illiterate pagan savages of pre Christian Ireland in everyday Celtic ways. Today, we will hear music from Capra Cayley, Kathleen McInnes, and Karen, Cara Dillon. And as always, it's a wee bit of Irish trivia to test your knowledge to start us off. Who was Ireland's most famous visitor in 1979? All right, remember, learngallic.net. It's a great resource for all your Gallic learning. Take advantage of it. I know I am. And anybody within the St. Louis area that would like to be a part of an actual weekly Scottish Gaelic class, be sure to comment and I will send you all the details. Alright, Kirsch Maha, let's kick this thing off. Alright, that was Elendun by Capricaley. 
And now, hot and Tom and fucking with Beck and Gallic. It's time for Let's Try a Little Colic. Today we'll discuss verbal nouns and the present participle. And as always, I will display on screen what I am discussing. So, Tasha Kikshin, let's begin. Verbal nouns, like other nouns, are either masculine or feminine, although most are masculine. Now here's a guide to help you with the gender of verbal nouns. Masculine words end in A-D-H. Egg. And like Skriavik, writing. The last vowel is broad. A-O-U. Uh, Kelnik. Buying. Okay, or feminine. The word ends in A-C-D. A-C-H-D, I'm sorry. Uh, as in Kashik, walking. Or the last vowel is narrow, E-I, in Shane, singing. The verbal nouns are used in the very same way as they are in English. Ansa Krishrivig, in, in the writing. Shan Va, good singing. Le Kashik, by walking. The present participle is formed from the verbal noun by adding either egg or a the egg is placed before the verbal noun beginning with the vowel and a um, is all other cases the present participle is used in much the same way as in English to convey a continuous action in the present tense and here's some examples Hamiak Alber I am working a veilshiv, a kluk, are you playing? Chanil e, a skrivig, he isn't writing. Va iet a furak, they were staying. Ein ro iet a shine, were they singing? Karo mi ak ichya, I wasn't eating. Now in spoken Gaelic, the a in the a in the ak. It's hardly pronounced, particularly if the next word ends in a vowel. As in, ha'i agari, is usually pronounced verbally, ha'i agari. Hami akoshik comes out as hami koshik. So, that's the reason why you kind of need to learn spoken, the the spoken Gaelic, and you also need to learn the, the written Gaelic with all the grammar so that you can tell them both apart. It's that simple. Using the present participle and the past tense of the verb to be conveys a continuous action in the past. So, agari, wanting. In the present tense, hami agari erigich, I want some money. But in the past tense, all you gotta do is change that first. Vamia Gary Erigich, I wanted some money. And same thing goes with the A. Kretchen, believing. Hamia Kretchen, Shin, I believe that. Vamia Kretchen, Shin, I believed that. All right, now we're going to go to some vocabulary words. Conjunctions, no is or. Nouns, Erigich, money. Banka, Bank, Ord, Hammer, Tala, Hall, Park, Park. Place names, Dunjay for Dundee, Oberjayen, Aberdeen, Pershd for Perth, Portray for Portray, Shrile for Sterling, and Terbich for Terbert. Verbs. Now, I'm going to give you the verb root word, and then the verbal noun, and then what it is in English. So, Bruin is Bruin. A speak. Koshik. Koshik. Walk. Fuck or fuckle. Leave. Fordick or Fordick. Stay. Yeskitch, yeskak, fish, rock, 
or dull for go, cur or cur for put, ear or eerie for want, or toshik or toshikig for start or begin. Alright, now I want you to translate these to English. Number one, Anroshiv Agiri, sorry, Anroshiv Iri, shine, Akaheli. Va Ahalak, Achluk Lesh Ahu, Hanil Iet Afurak Anan Srilai, Vami Alegig Anan Park. Hanil Iet Tashikig An Savatin and Nachel E Ach Aber Achintai. All right, and that's it for Fucking Mitch Beck and Gallic. Far try till a vanker, and batter a full of link of fall and a murder. Is one a sapach for crag is no poly, a hewn scum the hacked guy for the head port. Horo ilian ach chuking shevlium, sa nul far na linea, na pier of curum. I'm going to be chilly, gosh, and you're soon to go home to the house. I'm going 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 to go home to the house. I'm not gifting nor slea, such seven year pay of pesky. Not hechnishing, she ain't an unfeo with your lishki. Hick she charring vespria, agus fia maraisaku. Talk of our mishnah na piu for brawn. Horo ilen, ach chucking shevlium, sa no far no linea na piu got of curum. I'm going to be chilly, gosh, in your vessel. Doch, doch, on the tuha, far as in your. Shechot ma dear up of the yelling and shallog, we faking the nears can send skier and carmelo, but do lack em the of cut a yan line a matter of own, cause under waxing fed achka eighth port, horo yen achuking shevlum, so go far no linea, na pierga of curum. I'm going to be chilly, gosh, in your vessel. Doch, doch, on a tuha, farosh in your. Across the line, I've been a little bit younger. Va mit sich o keinal, zwa leing in a palig. Va bocht o na leif, skand a gain ich e ken alte. Gav u je alles de scherak di hol. Hor o ile nach chuking shevlum, sa nu far na linea, na pierga lav kurem. Snam gring vi chile gosh in ye vesum. Oh, on the two half far ocean yog.
All right, that was Kathleen McInnes with Horno Elaine. And she is our focus today in the Celtic Music Spotlight. Now, Kathleen McInnes, or Caitlin Neek Ungus in Scottish Gaelic, was born on 30th of December 1969. She is a Scottish singer, a television presenter, and an actress who performs primarily in Scottish Gaelic. Now, McInnes was born and brought up on South Uist in the Western Isles in a Gaelic Gaelic speaking home and has enjoyed an interesting career in television as an actress, presenter, and singer. Her various projects on television include being a presenter of Taxi, a Scottish BAFTA award winning television show of Gaelic and Celtic arts and culture, a part in the Gaelic soap opera Macher parts on BBC TV's comedy show, such as Randan and PC Alistair Stewart, the film Interrogation of a Highland Lassie, in which she performed two songs, children's TV programs, plus regular voiceovers for BBC cartoons and the series animations from around the world for more media. Her stage work includes a part in The Well from the producers of Riverdance, a theater production for Dublin Theater, plus a handful of plays for Tusk and performances at various music festivals. McInnes has been a regular guest on music programs such as Mac TV's Bard Na Oran, BBC's award-winning series Akri Akruel, and Mike Alexander's Columbus Sessions, where she sat long leading Scottish and Irish singers and musicians. Kathleen also took part in the concert Flower of the West, a tribute to Runrig Brothers Callum and Rory MacDonald, and enjoyed performing with Blas as a support singer to Van Morrison. Wow, uh, this girl is busy. Well, that's it for Celtic Music Spotlight. Next, we're going to delve into the rich history that is our Celtic past in today's Celtic History Break. Today's topic is St. Andrew's Day. What is that all about? The Scottish flag displays a blue black ground with a white sideways cross or X. The flag honors the patron saint of Scotland, St. Andrew. Although he was not actually born in Scotland, Scotland was even a country when St. Andrew's during his time. It was a wild land on the edge of the known world full of tribes of Celtic peoples. The patron saint was born in Bethsaida in Galilee, which is now Israel. Uh, Andrew's home was Copernicum, though. And while, like his brother Simon Peter, he was a fisherman. Yes, this is the Andrew of biblical times. Andrew, along with Peter, James, and John, formed the inner circle of Jesus' twelve apostles. Um, Andrew was, however, a disciple of St. John the Baptist prior to becoming a follower of Christ. He was baptized by John the Baptist and was the first disciple of Jesus. In the Greek Orthodox tradition, he is known as Protokletos, literally called the first called. Now, not a great deal is known about this, about his early life, other than he is mentioned in the Bible as taking part in the feeding of the 5,000. It is not absolutely certain where he preached the gospel or where he is buried, but Petrus is Achaia, and Achaia claims to be the place where he was martyred and crucified on a cross. Whilst it is not certain where Andrew actually preached, Scythia, Trace, and Asia Minor have all been mentioned. It appears he traveled great distances in order to spread the word of God. And it may be this which links him with Scotland. In St. Andrew, I'm sorry, St. Andrew is not just the patron saint of Scotland. He is the patron saint of Greece, Russia, Italy's Amalfi, and Barbados, as well as a few other countries. He's the patron saint of singers, spinsters, maidens, fishmongers, fishermen, women wanting to be mothers, gout, and sore throats. <laughs> St. Andrew is also the patron saint of the Order of the Thistle, one of the highest ranks of chivalry in the whole world, second only to the Order of the Garter. Now, two versions of events claim 
St. Andrew's link to Scotland and its flag. Now, one legend builds upon St. on Andrew's extensive travels, claiming that he actually came to Scotland and built a church in Fife. This town is now called St. Andrew's, and the church became a center for evangelism, and pilgrims came from all over Britain to pray there. Another legend claims how it was after the death of St. Andrew, sometime in the 4th century, that several of his relics were brought to Fife by rule. The purported relics of St. Andrew, including a tooth, kneecap, arm, and finger bone. This meant the town of St. Andrew's became a popular medieval pilgrimage site up, up until the 16th century, when they were destroyed in the Scottish Reformation. In 1870, the Archbishop of Amalfi sent an apparent piece of St. Andrew's shoulder blade to Scotland, where it has since been stored in St. Mary's Cathedral in Edinburgh. Now, St. Andrew has also been remembered down through the ages for the way he met his terrible death in 60 AD. St. Andrew was crucified on the 30th of November of that year by order of the Roman governor, Aegeus. He was tied to an X-shaped cross in Greece, and this is what represented by the white cross on the Scottish flag, the Saltire, since at least 1385. It is said that he believed himself unworthy to be crucified on a cross like that of Christ, and so he met his end on a Saltire, or X-shaped cross the St. Andrew's cross, which we come to know now, which became his symbol, his cross, in white on a blue background, remains the proud symbol of Scotland. His remains were moved 300 years after his death to Constantinople, now Istanbul, by the Emperor Constantine. And that's the last we know of that. The supposed anniversary of his martyrdom is the 30th of November, and it is this date that is honored as his feast, feast day each year. Churches were dedicated to him from early times throughout Italy and France, as well as in Anglo-Saxon England, where Hexham and Ronchester were the earliest of the 637 medieval dedications. Nationalism is rampant in Scotland and has been for a very long time. St. Andrew, with his connection to our Lord Jesus Christ, is a large feather in the cap of Scotland. It is also something to fight for, and has been many times, and it is something to die for, and sadly has also been done many times before. This is why we celebrate the patron St. Andrew. He is a symbol that resembles the land he represents, honorable, humble, hardworking, reverent and tough and that's for sure and that's it for today's history break
That was Kathleen McKinnis in her uh, song, Agurian. Now it's time for Everyday Celtic Ways and looking at how our Celtic heritage is still very much a part of our everyday lives. Today we'll tell you about Bible stories for the illiterate pagan savages of pre-Christian Ireland. Now, Castle Dermot, High Crosses, Ancient Cross in County Kildare, is a good example of a monastic Christian Celtic cross. Castle Dermot, the monastic site, is six miles northeast of Carlow. In the churchyard, churchyard there are two 9th century high crosses with a round tower. The sites date back to around 815 or 818 um, when St. Dermot founded a monastery there. He was the son of Dermot, High King of Ireland, and was an abbot and bishop. However, he died in 823, not long after founding the monastery. His feast day is held on 23rd of June. Now, a monastic Celtic cross were more than just grave markers. They were the teaching stones of the early Christian church, the center of religious learning prior to the great churches, and centers of learning that would later be built. The early pagan Irish people had a tradition of passing, passing things on orally. Few had learned to read and relied on being told everything they knew or would know. The earliest monks and religious men of the times had the important and meaningful stories of the Bible carved into these crosses and then used them as tools to teach the illiterate about the Christian religion. The best preserved of these two high crosses, the North Cross, stands at 10 feet tall and is made of granite. On its base, there is a hunting scene, while on the back, the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. The shaft has panels depicting biblical scenes, including David with his harp, Adam and Eve. The central panel between the wheelhead shows the crucifixion of Christ. Now, the South Cross has only the granite shaft remaining, but the detail, although worn, shows David in the lion's den in the lower panel, while the top panel has the sacrifice of Isaac. The middle panel has Celtic interlacing and spirals. The round tower now, somewhat damaged, dates from the 10th century and still stands at 25 meters high or 65 feet. Also the foundations of a ruined church. A reconstructed Romanesque doorway and grave slabs dating from the 8th to the 12th century. Now this te technique of teaching using the carvings on a Celtic cross dates back to even before St. Patrick and was widely spread across Ireland and into parts of Scotland and Wales. To the early Christian monks, spreading the word of God was their ultimate goal. It was the great commission given to them by Jesus Christ himself to go out onto the world and spread the good news of Jesus Christ unto all nations. And that's what they did. They didn't let anything stop them. And that's it for our Everyday Celtic Ways. Well, that's it for today's show. I hope you liked it. I'm trying to keep it interesting, informative, and fun. For me, anytime you can infuse something Celtic in your day, that's a good day. 
Now, I have something I would like to say to uh, those of you who like what I'm doing here. Thank you, and thanks for all the support and kind words. I believe from all the views and subscribers I've gotten recently that uh, you like what I'm doing. However, I, I think I need to say, as I have in the past podcast, that I am just a beginner as well. An advanced beginner, but still just a beginner. And I'm not, or do I represent myself as an authority on the Gallic language. Only someone who loves learning it. And who wants to help other beginners in their journey of learning Gallic. Now to those who feel it necessary to critique every little thing I do, I appreciate your input, but criticism should be always done in a kind and gentle manner as to not scare off the student who just wants to learn and have fun. What I teach comes right from the textbooks of well-respected Gallic teachers, and I am sure they would not steer me wrong. Remember, I am a beginner just trying to make something interesting, informative, and fun, which can help other beginners learn and have fun. So come on. All right. Now before I go, today's trivia question. The answer is Pope John Paul II. He visited Ireland in 1979. And footnote here said that he garnered masses of people even greater than the Beatles. <laughs> Which is great. Remember to check out LearnGallic.net. Also, my YouTube channel. I got some new things going on right now um, with Gallic music videos with the lyrics in English and in Gallic so you can learn the Gallic songs. And uh, for absolute beginners, I'm doing a flashcard series which helps you learn some of the Gallic words. All right. Now, if you like, if you, if you want to just promote or help out promoting Scottish stuff and Scottish Gallic language, acgaamerica.org is a great place to start. All right. Martian Leave and Dresda, bye for now. We'll let you go with the song from the Kara uh, Dillon, The Parting Glass. Hope you like it. Of all the money that ever I had I've spent it in good company And all the harm that ever I've done Unless it was to none And all I've done for want of wit To memory now I can't recall So fell to me the parting glass Good night and joy be with you Of all the comrades that e'er I've had They are sorry for my going away And all the sweethearts that e'er I've had They would wish me one more day to stay But since it falls should not I'll gently rise and I'll softly call good night and joy be with you all a man may drink and not be drunk a man may fight and not a man we court a pretty girl 
Come fill to me the parting.